Come on. Perfect. Okay. Taking a financial risk to make a profit. I'm sorry, what did you say? Activity of setting up a business or businesses. And then taking a financial risk to make a profit. And we're going to go ahead and go to page 53. Two times. Okay. So according to the SBA Small Business Administration, there are 28 million small businesses in America, and they account for 54% of all the U.S. sales. Small businesses provide 55% of all jobs and 66% percent of all new jobs since the 1970s. What is that, 600,000? The 600,000 plus franchised small business in the U.S. account for 40 percent of all retail sales and provide jobs for some 8 million people. The small business sector in America occupies 30 to 50 percent of all commercial space and is estimated 20 to 34 billion square feet. Before I forget this, I want, to, want you guys to write this down. A lot of Fortune 500 companies, what would y'all guess? What would they put majority of their profits into? Would you say inventory or marketing and promotion? Marketing. Exactly. So... Make sure, though, when we're reading these quotes and we're reading these numbers, that these numbers help kind of relate to us. When we're talking about making that money, the retail sales, they didn't they put in there how much money they might spend on marketing and promotion to make, those, make that money. We're going to say entrepreneurship and small business sector is growing rapidly while corporate America has been downsizing. The rate of small businesses startups has grown and the rate of small business failures has declined. The number... The number of small businesses in the U.S. United States has increased 49% since 1982. Since 1990, as big business eliminated 4 million jobs, small businesses and entrepreneurship added 8 million new jobs. So people like yourself is what's helping keep the economy going. America understands that small businesses are needed to kind of keep things moving. So let's go, uh, page 54, four traits of an entrepreneur. First of all, entrepreneurship is a way of thinking. Start young. That's why I'm so glad that she brought her, her kids here. So glad John is here. The world, the world needs new entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs create jobs, lift the standard of living, usher new technology into society, and keep competition alive in the marketplace. Entrepreneur is a problem solver. An entrepreneur is a problem solver. So anytime you're trying to figure out how your business is going to grow, ask yourself, what problem are you solving? The bigger the problem, the bigger the money. An entrepreneur looks at a problem and knows it's an opportunity to get paid if you can be the one to solve it. Successful entrepreneurs focus their energy on providing creative solutions, circle that, creative solutions to the problem solving process. Creative solutions, Amazon, people want stuff next day. They don't want to go to a normal brick and mortar uh, business to, to order things. A creative way. All right, I lost my, where we at? The bigger the problem, the more people will pay for the solution. Thank you all. Every good product solves some sort of problem. This solution can be a product or service that one charges a fee for. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, your natural response to any given problem should always be to ask yourself, how can you solve that problem? Problem solving becomes a habit. As you become alert to problems, 
with no solutions, you become alert to new ways to create, grow, develop, and innovate new products or services. So you might have a client that comes to you with one specific problem. Problem. They might say, hey, I ain't having, I'm having this issue. But you got to be able to think outside the box, just like you was talking about grouping all of these different businesses together, uh, Angel. You solving all these problems. You saying, okay, instead of paying somebody to do your cake, give me to do the cake. Instead of paying somebody, you know what I'm saying, you got to travel for a honeymoon, you can go to me for the honeymoon. So the problem is, where am I going to go to get this stuff done? And if you make it more convenient so I can just deal with one company, I'm more inclined to do business with you from all the different angles because you're solving more than one problem. An entrepreneur takes calculated risks. Scared money don't make no money. You want to take calculated risks, not random, high risk situations. When we say calculated risk, we're talking about things that's going to give you some kind of return, short term or long term. Risk. Risk-sensitive people don't make very good entrepreneurs. We have a saying, scared money don't make money. Neither do extremely reckless people who leap first and look later. We talked about success has to be planned. Real entrepreneurs evacuate their potential risk. They always, they also know how to minimize the risk they need to take through the hard work, dedication, and strategic planning. When a risk goes bad, an entrepreneur doesn't waste a lot of time looking for someone to blame. Instead, a true entrepreneur analyzes what went wrong, learns from it, and moves on. So when we're talking about these mistakes, I created this campaign, I created this business, and ain't nobody buying this product that I created. An entrepreneur is going to look at it, why they ain't buying it? Maybe it's the price point. Maybe it's the way you're marketing it. Maybe it's a, a, a hidden, my thing is niche markets. I don't like markets everybody else is in. Some people want to do real estate. They want to do real estate where they buy, rent houses. I don't want to do that. I like bed and breakfasts. I like experiences. So this is going to be by my angle of, of, of doing real estate. So what you got to understand is, is that it's so many different angles of being an entrepreneur, and you got to be able to make sure that you keep your mind sharp. Me and my dad kind of got a thing. There's any business, any restaurant, any place we go somewhere and somebody making money, we count their money. We go, <laughs> as an entrepreneur, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person, just, man, I just watched somebody make four, five hundred dollars in 15 seconds. How did it, ooh, okay, five hundred dollars times ten, ooh, that's fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> That's right, night. So as an entrepreneur, you always, you know what I'm saying, counting money. You're always doing the numbers. You're like, okay, 20000 Would I just seen somebody just made $10,000. All right, so I got to sell 1000 I got to sell 100 units for $1,000 to make $10,000. Where somebody else might look at it and, oh, 10000 oh, you can't make that. But an entrepreneur is always looking at risk, calculating, okay, if I add a little bit of this, do a little bit of this, how can I bring more value? Do a little bit of this, and then you work backwards. You, you create solving the problem first, and then you work on the process. The problem is that if you ain't got a healthy scalp, your hair gonna fall out. The solution to that is let me teach you how to create a healthy scalp. The problem is you overweight, you can't produce, you tired all the time, you ain't got the energy to be able to take your business to the next level. The solving thing is you create a health fitness group. You find other like-minded individuals, and y'all start working out together. You might say, okay, we're going to start working out together, and everybody's going to put $10 up, and we're going to start eating healthy together. So you find the solution, and that's what creates an incredible entrepreneur. That's all we're doing is finding problems and solving them. An entrepreneur is self-motivated. We talked about that. Ain't nobody going to um, follow your dream but you. This is about more than simply being your own boss. This is about more than simply being able to get up in the morning and go to work. An entrepreneur is always capable of seeing potential in most situations. 
the daily objective is not about being satisfied. Sure, you want to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor, but that's not the main focus. The business mindset keeps you keeps one looking forward to creating more opportunities. So once you start on your path, you don't get caught up and get comfortable. You constantly looking for the quest. You constantly are on the you're on the quest and the path for greatness. So you saying, okay, well I didn't, I didn't open up one restaurant, I open up one tax franchise. How can I open up another one? And you constantly are thinking about the bigger picture. So you ain't never getting burnt out. And then when you do make money, you ain't never getting satisfied. You get satisfied. Satisfied is like almost can be as, uh, as deadly as not doing anything. People get satisfied at work. People get satisfied in relationships. People get satisfied with uh, low-end results. Never get satisfied. We're going to talk about a little bit about you know, saying some basic terms. We're on page 56. We talked about the situation. Y'all heard me talk about how my dad always had us selling incense. Right? And one, these are some of the terms that you got to understand in business. Here's the simple math. Cost for a thousand sticks of incense is $10. So my dad used to take us to Chicago every weekend to buy wholesale incense. A thousand sticks cost us ten dollars. Fifty sticks made a, re a resale pack for a dollar. So we sold each bundle, each pack for a dollar. We make fifty packs from the bundle, which equals fifty dollars. The initial investment was 10, so the, product, the profit is 40. Anytime you're doing business, do the numbers. The numbers ain't going to lie. Some people don't like to do the numbers because the numbers is going to tell you reality, but the numbers ain't going to lie. Some of the terms we're going to be talking about in next is reinvest. After all of the incense is sold, you must invest in more stock in order to keep turning over income and profits. When you have a business, you did a deal, somebody buys something from you, that ain't your money. That is not your money. That money is seed money that's supposed to go back into the business. In the dope game and in the, in, 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 in the street things, it's about flipping it. You got to flip that money. You got to work money. Money is a tool. You got to work money. You see people all the time who come in, inherit $100,000. Don't have no business structure, no idea on how to be able to use money, and they buy a whole bunch of tools. Whole bunch of little, uh, not tools, they buy, buy a whole bunch of toys. And they be trying to sell that stuff back. <laughs> trying to sell back to you when they broke. So you got to constantly reinvest. I'm going to kind of skip through a little bit. Actually, I'm going to keep on going. This procedure is repeated over and over again to maintain a consistent business. We talked about the um, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. You got to take that first initial investment and flip it and keep flipping it. Most times what happens is people make that thousand dollars, they get somebody to buy a book or buy a coaching program or this and that or some kind of a car or get their hair done. They take that money and they go pay some bills with that money. That ain't your money. That's like a child. It's like a child they got to eat. You got to let that money, you got to put, you got to nourish, uh, use that money to get more food. Nurture that money, use that money to flip, and that's a tool because guess what? It is nothing like being in business and you got money and you ain't got no stock. Mm -hmm. Or you got stock and you ain't got no money. Being around so many entrepreneurs, I'm going to go ahead and read this real quick. We talked about that wash, rinse, and repeat was the key to success with repeat results. So when you're starting off that business, when you're starting off that new idea, you're coming into it with writing everything down. One of the things that I used to be real good at when I did my festivals and fairs is keeping a history of what I sold, what day, how much I sold, what hours 